All right, everybody, welcome. I'm gonna do a quick demo talking about silhouettes and how I start. So um, one of the first things that I like to do is, is think about what are pretty much like the basic shapes. What are the very, very basic, basic shapes that you might start with if I'm working on a house, okay? So I'm gonna start with this right now. And of course I have none of my hotkeys in here, which sort of sucks. And I have someone else's hotkeys in here, so give me a minute. To, let's go here. Okay, so I love using the lasso tool. I find it extremely friendly to start with, and I can draw on top of it, right? So what do I know right now? That is like the simplest basic form of a structure. And of course, remember the things that I told you guys, the bad things that are in there. So the bad things we talked about are having too much, too many 90 degree angles. And that's just, you know, it's a really basic, simple house, right? So, you know, when we're looking at our subject matter, which is... Hold on, my screen's mirrored. Let me see if I can bring it up here. Let's go back to our block site here. Okay, so it's a Dart 109. Not SART. So if we come back and we look at our subject matter, um, we're talking about, okay, Old England. And as far as silhouettes go, you know, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. Um, there's basically, in my opinion, there's sort of like three different types of architecture when I look at, at, at medieval and old England in London. So you have architecture with people that live out in the, let's see if we can find some of this, out in the countryside with houses that might look similar to this, where they're a little bit more man-made man with man-made materials and the materials that were local to them. So that's one key thing right there is whenever you're designing a location, I mentioned this in your homework, is think of the theme that you're going to do. If you're picking Farmer's Village, that's your theme, then farmers are going to use materials that are around there. You're going to use trees from the forest, you're going to use rocks, they're going to use types of mud that might look like cement that hold everything together. They can mix, probably make their own cement and so on. Versus, you know, they're going to have, you know, probably two to three stories max. Um, but then once you start looking into, and you'll see that here on a lot of the the village boat docks and so on, it's gonna be that same type of building theme. Once you start moving into bigger cities, okay, you're gonna to get to a little bit more expensive building materials. For now, you're gonna have custom bricks that are used, okay? But inside a city like this, okay, if you look at this building over here, you're four stories, right? First, second, third, fourth, okay, you get a little bit taller, all right? But one of the things that you're gonna see, which is pretty fascinating, is that cities have old districts inside them, right? So it was really common in, like, just think of New York, okay, common in London back then, that you would have, like, a gypsy district where you had people that didn't really have a home and they lived in one little area and it was, like, a more impoverished area. You had the Irish that would take over certain cities. Um, you had the Scottish that would take over certain cities. You had people that were Welsh that would take over a little city and they would bring out their flair. You had people that were Dutch, okay, they were, you know, from Holland, they would bring their flair and they would start to take over blocks of a city and then the building started to reflect upon part of their cultural background. Okay, that's really common. So if you're going to pick a city like this, that's totally fine. You can work like that. But just remember, are, are you, is there a ton of stone right now in these buildings? No. There's going to be more man-made material like bricks. There's going to be stuff that's going to be poured like cement edging and trimming. Okay. Now, we're not getting into all that detail right now to draw it, but it does affect the way that I think of in terms of the silhouette studies, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch something that's more sort of in this genre and something more along this area here, even maybe touching into part of that, okay? And I was mentioning before, what I like to do sometimes is I write down key elements that I see, okay? So let's go back here. Oops. Escape. Come on. Why is it not? Here it goes. All right. So I start with a base house. Okay. Um, if you want, and a lot of times I get rough with this. You don't have to be completely locked on. If you want to hold shift down and use that as an option. Okay. So that's like my base house right here. Okay. So here's my question is if I copy and paste that. So this is what I like to do is I use the paste tool a lot. Okay. I was going to, now I'm, I'm already getting off topic here. I was going to paste a bunch of houses and start drawing and making different versions. But before I do that, let me go back to the writing phase. So 
we had it we had a discussion not too long ago looking at all these different um, houses and everything right what were the things we talked about we looked at one that had six different types of what six different types of chimneys okay we saw different types of angle roofs okay um, we looked at some of the stone fronts okay what else did we gather from our reference anyone huh fencing that's right we saw fences what about stories the height differences in the building so I'm gonna put that down height differences okay sorry my writing so rough um, and that's that's actually quite a bit right there because now as I come in here you know I can take this base and I could start thinking, okay, well, what if these what if these walls on this guy were a little bit more bowed like this? Remember, Phil said no 90s. And what if this house is on a little bit of a foundation? And maybe there is a little balcony that comes off the edge. Okay, uh, maybe part of this roof. Maybe this roof has a dormer in it. And then I mentioned the chimneys, right? So maybe I have a small little chimney that comes out here. Maybe I decide to come back here. I'm holding shift a lot of times when I do this. Shift's a great little tool. You can just press on shift and then boom, you get a nice straight line. Okay, so now I have, you know, another chimney there. And then maybe, maybe this is, again, I want this at sort of an angle. I want to avoid that. Um, that 90. Maybe I bring this roof out a little bit. Maybe the roof is a little old and it sort of curves a little. Okay. Maybe there's a support here under part of this. Something else they had in this time period were bay windows. You guys know what a bay window is? It's a window that extrudes out from the front of a house. So bay windows would look like this. They usually had a slanted cover on them. Okay. And maybe then, maybe that's the back. So this is the front of the house. So I'm holding shift and I'm going to sort of go across and make a series of stairs here. How many of you guys have Max at home? Cool. Um, really cool little thing in, on your Mac, right? Is if you hold down Control and Alt together, you can instantly change the size of your brush when you're working. So if you go like that, it's big, and then you can just come back drag across like that and get really small so you can get little details and then you can quickly go up like this just by pressing a couple keys or if you want you can just use the brackets okay um, maybe then I put something like that like this okay now that came out a little thick but that's alright I'm just getting an idea down but you see the difference that's my first page that's my first little silhouette right that was where I started I had this ugly godforsaken thing you know, sometimes I like coming into the ugly and trying to figure out how to make it look cool or what else I could do. Maybe, maybe the roofs are like little wooden wedges and it's all messed up. Maybe the guy that built this was Irish and drunk. So he's got a like huge angled support that's off. You know, maybe part of the wall comes this way, comes out. Maybe there's a little porch or something here. See what I'm getting at? I just keep adding to it, thinking of different ways to enhance it, okay? So the great thing about Photoshop that you can do is you could come into something like this, copy, paste it, bring that down. I hit Control-T. If you have a three-button mouse, if you have a Mac and you have a one-button mouse, throw that thing in the trash and go buy a three-button mouse because it's really easy if you hit Control-T, if you right-click, in any of the options in Photoshop, you have this instant window right here that pops up. So now I could come over here and I could flip this the other direction really quick. Okay. Um, the paste memory is still to what I selected earlier. So if I paste that one in, you see that? I bring that over, transform. Okay. Um, so you see what I just did? In like two seconds, I just created a whole other thumbnail based off of part of my other design. So 
if you use Photoshop, Photoshop's your friend. You can use these tools to save yourself a ton of time. Okay, so now watch. I have this guy, right? And I want to do something else. So what I prefer to do, what I would recommend, I'll, I'll see if, try to remember this and I'll put it on top of your, um, the homework assignment. Start with individual buildings. Then try to do a couple as a group and then try a city block of buildings because you're pushing your level of variation every time. So when you start with one building, you could use that, but then when you put them with three or four buildings, they all, you start to introduce variation. And then when you have a city block, you can have lots of different variations and styles in there. Okay, so let, watch. Let's say I had this guy. So I want to come back to this. What I like to do too, I hate having multiple layers. I just control E, I put everything on one layer and just move it. To me, it's a lot easier not wondering what layer was what and which one. And yes, technically, if you don't want to do that in Photoshop, the right button power, if you hit command and you right click on that layer, it'll tell you what the layer is. See that? So if I do that there, it tells me, oh, that's layer three. If I do it here, that's layer four. If I do it here, it's layer five. Really fast, easy way to work if you have a ton of layers, but a lot of times I find it just more efficient to commit and work on one. Okay, so it's back to this. So I'm going back to this godforsaken building here that I started with, right? I'm trying to think, what else could I do to it? What if I came over here and just, sometimes I just go for something totally different. What if there was some type of a huge, this guy was drunk, right? He's like a drunk Irishman. And I could say that because actually, even though I have more of my Greek side, my mom is actually Irish background. So I'm like the worst person in the world. I have Irish drinking combined with a Greek temperament from the Mediterranean. Now, I like these little things. You'll see these all the time in England. You see these little... Great little signs that sort of hang down. All different types of shapes and sizes. They do a lot to match part of the time period, you know. Make that look like one of those little windows that are open. I got this little guy hanging. Now, remember I told you, what can you do on the second page? And then you come back in with white, right? So that's a lot of fun because you can be doing this. And then, so if you don't know Photoshop, right? You have pick white and black on the color pickers. And if you hit X, you can rotate between them really quickly. So you'd be working here and you're in black. And then you can just come in here now and you just hit X and you can be like, you know, and you can start thinking about Maybe you have a window, you know, maybe there's a, a part of a wall that comes down to here, you know, maybe you can establish the part of that roof line or something that comes here. So use white however you want. It's up to you. There's no rules. So you could keep going with that. Maybe I decide like, oh, they, a lot of times they had like wood structures, like fascia beams is what they were called. You still use them today on like houses and stuff, right? So maybe this is all like roof and that was separate layer. And maybe this is like wood decoration. I don't know. Like that, okay? So you could use that on the second page, all right? Give me a second. All right, but we're back on the first page. Let's see. I want to put a shop keep going. Let's see how far we can go back. Okay, real quick. Let me switch back to colors here. And then I'll show you one other little secret, one other cool little trick you can use for doing building shapes to get you to think outside the box a little bit more. Okay, so I had that building right. So let's steal that guy. My last year right here. 
copy paste them, bring them back here, all right? Transform is your friend. So look at that. See how that building looks different now? Transform. Not only transform, what else do I have? Huh? Say it louder. Well, that's more of a filter, right? But in the immediate transformations of distorting, I have warp. So watch. If I go back and say select all, if I go, hold on a minute here. Select all of the, move there, transform. So when I right click on this, under transform, I have warp. See that? By clicking warp, what the hell? Hold on a minute. Why? Okay, something's weird on Photoshop. I have, there's a weird setting on here, and I don't know what it is. Because look, this is all that's on that layer, and it's selected. It should put the box right around it only. It's something with the show trans. There it is. Maybe that's what it was. Um, when they, whenever they reinstall software on our machines, we lose all of our settings and all of our things. So let's see if this does it now. And I go to work. There it goes. So it was going to the whole screen. Now it's going all into the object that I selected. So what's cool with warp is this. See, so I can grab a corner of that house now. I want to put more character on it. Okay, well, I have all these options, right? So let's just let's mess with this building for a minute here. So that was warp, right? Look at distort, skew, and perspective. Those are great too. So under skew, it allows me to grab one side and pull it out like so. Okay. Under perspective, oh, excuse me, that was skew. Under distort, it allows me to grab a corner and move one corner at a time. Okay. See, I can create something totally different with what I already have. Okay. Um, and then perspective will move them both in at one side if you wanted to put it like on a grid. You see that? So if I wanted to do a floor tile, I can take like a brick pattern or a wall pattern, put it in perspective, adjust it, it moves both sides at the same time, and then it makes it look like it's working uh, together. But warp is really fun for silhouettes, okay? Uh oh. Transform, warp. And what's cool about this, oh, you have these little points here, okay? Who knows puppet warp? Anyone? Okay, I'll show you that really quick too. That's another selection. It's in the transformation family, but a little bit different. So here, I'm in warp, right? Look at what I can do with moving a point around. See how cool that is? Look at that gesture I could put on that building. Then I could come back here, touch here. See, I can grab that. And then I could keep pulling that guy in. And then I could grab this, pull him in. I could grab that arm and pull that in. See what I'm doing? I'm getting some really cool effects on that house. We're like, whoa, it looks sort of melted, right? So that's a really fun tool, OK? Now, puppet work. Now, this is what I hate about the show transformation is it leaves that box on. Let's go to work. There we go. For some reason, now, before when I did it, it did the whole entire page. I don't know why. But anyway, now it's working. So you know, there's your warp option, right? OK, check this out. If you go under Edit right here, you have this guy right here. It's above transform. It's called Puppet Warp. And this is a new tool in Photoshop that allows people to manipulate photos really quickly, but it works fantastically for silhouettes too. Okay, and this is how you use it. First thing you want to do is I would select your object. To select my object just now, I use this little shortcut, which is if I select all, everyone has different shortcuts. If I hit V, which is the move tool, and then hit an arrow down or up, it selects the whole entire object on that layer for me. There's a couple different ways. And there's another way where you hit option, tap the layer, and it'll select it too. But that's just the way I learned it. Now that I have that selected, I can go over here and I can go to Puppet Warp. And it puts this grid on top of everything selected. So the best analogy or metaphor I can give for you to think about how to use this is think of this as a piece of paper. You can now stretch and pull this piece of paper in any direction that you want. In order to do that, you have to put a thumbtack in it, okay? Or else, if you grab a corner, the paper moves. So watch. When I come over here, and see when I click on it, it put that little round thumbtack in it. You see that right there? So if I grab that thumbtack and move it, what is it doing? It's moving the whole piece, right? Why? It's a piece of paper. There's only one thumbtack. If I come put another thumbtack here and here, now I go to move this. 
it's holding the paper, right? Okay. So now I come over and I put a thumbtack here, 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 here. See, I can move just that piece over. So the rest of the body holds its integrity. I can grab this and be like, I want you to go here, but I want you to go this way. Okay, see that's pretty cool, right? That's great for photos because you can take a photo of a person like this, and you could take their arm, just select their arm, and make their hand go like that. And it looks like the same photo. Then you paint in the missing side, it's great. So that's why that was originally created, but it's great for manipulating things because it's really useful. So look, I have this guy right now. What if I pull this guy? Are there any little thumb pins right here? No. No. So if I pull this, it's going to pull that structure. But if I go one, two, three, that's going to hold that structure in place. And now if I grab that, see how I just stretch that and put it there. And then I can move these pins separately. And then when you're all done, you hit enter and it goes to a new shape. Pretty cool, right? It's a fantastic way to work. So um, that's a great way to work. So now I have that. So I basically took that building from up there, okay, stretched it, modify it. Look at how cool that looks with that little curvy guy, right? And now to finish this one off, what am I going to do? What's something that you would see in this time period? They didn't have a ton of washers and dryers. And a lot of times, even people that lived, kids that lived across from each other, they would take a little rock and they'd throw the rock with the string attached to it. They would try to string up, and then little kids would like send notes back and forth to each other and toys. So they'd be up, and they'd be you know close in the neighborhood. So people also use those ropes for hanging clothes. So I can put some other elements like that in here. Let's make that guy a little bit thicker. Maybe this is just some weird antenna thing that comes up here, and there's a rope that hangs down here, and then it goes like that. Why not? Because it just looks cool. Doesn't have to be justification for it, right? So I had this thing here. And now I'm looking at that, and I'm like, well, I don't know if I really like that. So I just hit eraser. I'm going to go in and take that out. And there's nothing wrong with carving back into something. If you want to come in and bring something to more of a point and erase it, that's fine. If you're working digitally, you can do that. Um, that's the only thing you can't do traditionally, is it usually I start with just a rough sketch, and then I go in and I fill it up a little bit, okay, very cautiously, because if I go with big, fat lines of a Sharpie, once I can't go in there unless I do white out, and that gets to be a little pricey and expensive, right? So what I'm going to do now is my thought is, hey, what if this is like a thicker structure here, and then caves in a little bit, okay? And then maybe this is like an old sort of stairway that sort of connects a little bit like this. And then maybe here, there's like some type of a round lantern with some type of a top or something. I don't know. That looks like a person. It could be a person. You know what? It's actually pretty large, so I'm going to reduce the scale down. And I'm going to copy and paste that. I'm going to put one over here. Maybe I'll just put it on the tip. Uh, I could put it like about right there. It doesn't quite look like the lantern I wanted it to look like, but what the heck. Right? Maybe I could put it over here on the top. It's just maybe it's some ornate decoration, you know? But remember, use Photoshop to your advantage if you want to use it. It's really friendly. It's easy. So there. So look at what I've done. How I've been, what, talking for about 10 minutes here? Okay, 15 minutes in this demo. I started with a real basic building, and I got to this right here. Okay, so um, the shape tool is extremely excuse me, not the shape tool, the lasso tool is your friend in Photoshop for doing this type of stuff. It saves you a ton of time. Now, I'm going to show you this is even um, how far I can push things. Just, you can do this, which works. So, I have a hotkey in Photoshop, which is fill. It's to fill something with black, but if you don't want to use that, you use a brush. But check this out. This is a way, I found this guy on the internet that works like this who does a lot of spaceship stuff, and it sort of turned me on to coming up with new shapes. Sometimes we are our own enemy. Because when you're sitting down drawing and you're sketching, you start criticizing yourself like, oh, no, that's not right. Oh, and then you become really precautious and you lose the energy that you might have had when you're creating something. Here's a way around that, okay? You take the lasso tool and you do this. The free lasso tool, not the straight edge. And you just hold shift. 
and you don't know what the hell you're going to come up with, and you just start drawing things, and you'd be amazed at how cool of an idea you might get. See what I just did there? Super quick. I go to brush, enlarge my brush, deselect. Now I'm going to go in and fill in anything that might not be there that I don't want to be there. Like this. But what's cool about that is see how it looks like it's on a hill now? And then I could go in and be like, okay, maybe that's there, and then this angles, and I don't know, maybe this is like a little extension to the house, I guess. Maybe there's an angle here. Maybe it has one of those wooden things that hang like this, and it has a round wheel. Start with core shapes, add little details. Maybe on the roof here. It has one of those weather thingies that spin around or whatever. You know what I mean? Chimneys, right? Maybe it can have a real skinny chimney here. And then right next to it, it's got to be a fat chimney. Right? It doesn't have to make sense. It's just about shape. It's about having fun coming up with different solutions. Okay? That was pretty quick, wasn't it? That was just taking the lasso, lasso tool and drawing something and then getting back into that, okay? So um, sometimes when I start, I'm one of those artists that I tend to be critical on myself where I start going like, oh, that line's wrong with your race or no, that, and then I start, I just say, forget that. I just sit down with the lasso tool and I just make out a whole bunch of shapes and then I get something that's really cool, okay? And part of that is the process of experimentation. It's used a lot inside our industry, in fact, um, a lot of concept artists, have you ever seen people painting something real rough and they flip the painting? That's what they're doing. They're searching for the happy mistake. What is the happy mistake? It's coming up with something where you weren't too critical on yourself and you have something that looks cool that you get to develop. It happens all the time. Scott Robertson had a great little demo where he talked about coming up with compositions. And one of the things that he would do is... He would take markers, and he'd put a bunch of markers and make like something about this big, and then he would zoom into one inch of it, copy that and blow it up and turn that into a composition. A lot of artists do the same thing, where they come into a whole page and they rough out and draw, and then they zoom in real quick and they take one part and blow it up, and then they make that work as a composition. There's nothing wrong with doing that. So the other thing I was gonna show you again, just to reiterate, is just a little bit about the power of this tool, the squash and the, uh, Copy and the paste. So look, I took that guy, watch. I'm gonna squash him down like this. Turn him vertical. Okay, paste. Take that other building. Bring him over like that. A little bit more, I like that silhouette right there. See how it goes right across the middle here? Okay, I'm gonna combine all my layers. Come back here. I have my eraser right now. Let's go straight across right over here. So now I'm going to go into like this additive and subtractive mode where I put something in there, I pasted something else. Let's see, I still have paste in my memory, right? Erase all this, transform. Erase this tip off here. Okay. Get it over right there. Take my lasso. Fill that. Deselect it. I got something different now, right? Really quickly. So don't be afraid to use some of the other elements that you've already made and see how they pop up, okay? One other thing I do sometimes to throw some variation in to my pieces is I, I take a, a shape and copy and paste it and see where I can put it around. Let me show what I mean by that. In order to do this, 
I want I want you to see. Um, I'm going to brown the back of the page because with white you can't really see. So I'm going to select the 20% grade, select all, edit, fill. I already put a layer on the back here. See that? It's a gray. That's actually not a bad idea. That way it makes your white pop out as another type of highlight. Okay. So something I would do quite a bit is I take something really simple and fast like this. Oops. Um, let's, let's make a couple chimneys real quick. Okay. And then I'll have them all in one layer, and then I could use them to my, my will. So deselect, I'm going to go to lasso. Let's start with the hard. This actually can be a really useful tool when you use it right. So I can go like this, go like this, this, this. That's one. Okay. There's another one. Okay, got those done. Go to my brush, hit X, switch back to black real quick. Okay, deselect. So those are going to be different types of chimneys, but they're 90 right now, right? So let's fix that really fast. Oops. Lasso, command transform, right click on that with your third button mouse, go to distort, right? Move the bottom in, now it's tilted. It's at a slight angle, it's a little bit different, it's more interesting to the eye. That's all 90s, right? Command, transform, right click on it, let's go to warp. Let's pull one side over a little bit like this, let's pull that, let's bring that end up a little bit. Bring that end up a little like that. Let's drop this guy down a little. Okay, done, that's different. All right, you select, go back to your lasso again, select this guy here. Um, let's go to transform. This time, what something we haven't done yet? We haven't done a uh, skew. Let's do skew. Skew's sort of boring sometimes, but sometimes it works a little bit. See, so it only it wasn't allow you to bring down. It only lets you go one or two ways, but that's cool. Okay, there we go. So now I have those. So now I could come over. The other thing I was going to do on this white background was a couple windows. Okay, so let's do that really quick. And select this X, okay. My brush. Uh oh, forgot to change back to white. There it goes. Okay. Now I don't want a perfect window, right? So I'm gonna go to transform right now. I'm just gonna grab one end. Actually, I have to go to distort to do this. One end a little bit there. One end a little bit there. One end a little bit higher here, right? Okay. Now I have all these. I can use those as parts really quickly. So watch. I can just come over here. I'm all in one layer. Do you see that? So I can use those as parts. I can select this guy right here, copy, paste. I can bring him over and be like, where do I want to put you? Oh, he's really big, right? But it could be a street sign, right? I could go in there and trim it down a little bit. Actually, let's do that. Put him right there. All right. Put eraser. Turn that down into more of a street sign. Go to my brush, connect it. Oops. X, get back to black. There we go. Now I got a street sign. Okay. Um, copy him. Uh -oh. Forgot to merge. Okay, copy, paste. Take that guy. Let's see if I can combine him somewhere over here. And let's transform him. He's way big right now. That's fine. Leave him up over there. Actually, I don't like him right there. He sort of ruins part of the. Maybe he's up there. He's like some type of a sign. I don't know. But see what I'm getting at? I'm just using these little parts to my advantage. The windows. Windows are key. All right. See that there? Take him, copy, paste, transform, right click. Let to flip vertically so they look a little, a little bit different. Okay, and then paste again. Transform. Let's go to uh, distort again. Grab one end out, pull it out a little bit, a little bit different. Save myself time. Grab all three windows, merge all my layers, grab them, copy, paste, bring them down here. Oops, oh, I made a small mistake. 
when I merged. But that's okay. I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to select it right in real tight on just the windows. Copy paste. Bring them down here. Transform. Use them as little windows. Contrast. Opposites. Okay. So now I can take those guys. And I still have the paste memory in there. So they came out large again. So that's easy. Transform. Scale it down. Squash them. Bring them over there. That. Erase one if you want. It looks different. See? It's just fun. You can use part of the software as your friend to help define some of the stuff. Okay? So um, one of the problems that happens with your art and when you're working is I just spent 20 minutes looking at it like this, up close. Your eyes become used to it. Finish one page, stop it, walk away. Go outside, look outside at the air, talk to your mom, go say hi to your dad, pick on your younger brother, okay, whatever it is. Come back in half an hour, and when your eyes are fresh, you will be able to look at it, and you will notice what is appealing and not appealing. You will notice your mistakes. When you sit and look at something forever and render the heck out of it for hours and hours and hours, your eyes get so used to it that you don't notice the mistakes anymore. Have you ever done that where you've worked on a piece of work for like four hours and then you walk away and you come back and you're like, oh my God, what was I thinking? It's all rendered wrong or looks horrible. That's why your eyes get used to it. So now I could come back, I could look at this and I have a good idea like, I mean, this always happens to me. Look where I started. It's boring. Look where I'm ending up right here. That's fun. It's getting squashy and stretchy. I'm having some fun and I could keep taking any of these designs and I could keep manipulating and adding to them, okay? Think about contrast. What I mean by contrast, what happens if you have a round building with square buildings? What happens if you have houses next to the taller Victorian houses, okay? Where would Sherlock Holmes live? Think about stuff like that. What if you have a building that has a huge roof that's much bigger than, let me do that one real quick for you. So when I think of contrast, okay, that's the type of stuff that I think of on a regular basis. A lot of things I was drawing here, just to show you, um, not that it's off, but, okay, um, is it that height is almost the same height as that, which is really similar to that. See that? That's boring. Okay. Um, so what happens when I do this, when I think of having a roof like that, and then my building is like that. And it has a, see what I'm getting at? The roof is twice the size of the building. That becomes a little bit more interesting. Or, and then I go next to it, then I have a giant building that's huge. Then that has a squashed roof. Okay, so those are opposites. Playing opposites with with each other are going to give you better design results and can make things look more appealing. So I can take those shapes now, and then I could start working on them. And I could add in the other little details. I can add in a chimney. I can add in an overhang. You know, and I might get something that works pretty cool. Okay. Um, Sketchbook Pro, I know I've been working in Photoshop here. The one thing that I really like about Sketchbook Pro, you know what? It's not installed on this machine. Oh, there it is. Let me pull it up really quick. One thing I like about Sketchbook Pro that's pretty cool is that the lasso tool works differently and it holds itself from the beginning so I can go like this. Follow the shape you're making of a building. See what it's doing? So I can think about, and then it ends. See how I just did that? And then I could come over and grab and just fill it with a touch of the bucket tool. OK, grab the bucket. And if I'm on black, and then I could touch it, boom. Actually, it disappeared there. I don't know why. This might be the new old version. It is 7. I have 6. Anyway, so um, that's friendly sometimes. but. It's really not that big of a deal. It has layers in here, and it gives you a lot of the same things that Photoshop has. So if you can't afford Photoshop and can't get it, you know, but there's some really great deals on this right now. So anyway, come in here, have fun, stop, take a look at your reference, go back, take a look at your buildings, 
play with it. Okay, so um, I'm going to update the blog right now. Let me stop the recorder real quick. What time are we at? We're a good time.